like Halloween here in Durham, North Carolina, where it is 80-something degrees. But I am bringing the Halloween. <laughs> Look, I even have a magical dress on for you guys. Can you believe it? And I know you can't see all of my witch hat. I'll come all the way. See, look, I even have, oh, you can't see that way. Oh, look, I even have regular shoes on like a human. There you go. You can kind of see my witch, my witch headband. Hey, Carol. So I'm going to start and kind of just go right into making this because then I have some show and tell while this chili is cooking. Oh, it's a galaxy gown and it kind of is, isn't it? I prefer that whole dropped waist thing, but evidently I'm old and fashion doesn't care. <laughs> I'm glad that you like it. Um, Jamie, I'll come back to any questions. So anyhow, so just know if you're only, you're seeing only part of my hat, but that, that's not the most important part, but you know, again, it's 87 degrees, and I'm not happy about that. Hi, Delia from Albuquerque. You guys, tell me how the weather is where you are. My friend Danny in Oregon is dealing with freezing weather, which is crazy to me since I just want to have a really, I want to be cozy in a sweater. But, so, Halloween, and I, if you guys are on my email list, if not, look wherever the description is get my free spice list, join in the email list so you too can know all the future events and fun things and recipes that are happening out there. But I think some people got scared yesterday when I made pumpkin spice syrup and thought, oh, she's just gonna make sugary treats every day for 31 days. No, don't worry, there will be more coffee drinks and some things that do have to do with sweeteners with options for what you do. But if you're SOS or SOFA's free, I got you too. So don't worry, just do not worry at all. And actually I think for the this week, I haven't finished planning yet, but it looks like we're gonna do dinner and do four o'clock lives Monday through Friday. You'll know for sure if you're on my email list and you can get on my email list if you don't if you're like, I don't see that anywhere, just go to healthyslowcooking.com. There's an email list. You will receive four awesome spice blends that you can print out and put on your fridge and that are easy to make and that you do not have to buy anymore. Okay, so what we're gonna make, and we're kind of, I'm remaking this. So a long time ago, and possibly in my very first vegan slow cooker book, I had a black bean sweet potato chili. And that was one of my go-tos as a slow cooker dish for decades before I ever wrote a cookbook. I haven't made it exactly in the Instant Pot and I've soaked the black beans. So I, and in fact, it's so warm, they sprouted last night. Some of them, not all of them. And I'll show you that. So I did soak a pound or two cups of dried black beans for at least eight hours. I cut up about four cups of sweet potatoes. What I love is the sweet potatoes kind of melt in and you can, you can um, once we've cooked them, we can push them to the side and mash them and thicken up the chili. It's a way that if you can't have tomatoes, you could just leave them out. We'll, we'll look at it at the end and decide if we're gonna put some in or not. Um, the magic is in the spices. So this is gonna be super easy, but look, we've got onion powder, garlic powder, we've got chili powders, like single ingredient chili powders, like New Mexico chilies or ancho chilies. You could use chili for the stew powder, but if it has salt, put it in after. We're gonna use some um, smoked paprika. You could use liquid smoke. Have a little jalapeno powder. I have, I'm gonna jazz it up. We're gonna do a little cinnamon coriander, cumin, um, Mexican oregano or oregano or, or marjoram and a little bit of cocoa powder, which I'm kind of making that up as I go along right now. Um, so there you have it. Let's see. Oh, lots of warm days. So it's not just me. Real is making split pea soup with apple. Yum. I, I want to go to get some apples and some pie pumpkins. I don't know if I can do that today or if I have to wait till tomorrow, but we'll see. Yeah, it all sounds good. So 
I have my note taking implements over here as I'm doing this so I can tweak it and I'm going to try and get it up on the blog at least by next week. So it will be on plantbasedincidentpot.com. Oh, I'm glad you like the hat. I'm just, I'm tired of it feeling like summer. Yeah. And Alicia says she likes cocoa powder, cinnamon, and espresso. Espresso is another thing you could add. I don't want to have any caffeine in my chili. There's probably, there's a little bit in cocoa, but I would think there would be a little bit more in espresso, but I don't know. But that's, that was my initial thoughts. All right, so let's just kind of get in here and get started. So I don't know if, yeah, you can see right on top. See right there? Sprouted. So I, I soaked these, and so because I soaked them, they are not gonna need as much water in here as if I didn't soak them, right? Because they've soaked up a lot of water. They will get softer and soak up a little bit more, but it's not gonna go crazy. Let's see, can we get... <laughs> I'm gonna make it where you can see the things, okay. And I wanna make sure, and I've, I've got this in a four cup measure so I can see about how much water I'm gonna use. I'm thinking it's probably two and a half to three. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use three cups of water. Once I get everything else in here, we'll see if I feel differently, but I'll put that for right now. Three and a half. Okay, you could have, what brand of cocoa powder? <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> It's whatever's in here, and I have no idea. It's probably the cheapest cocoa I could get at Sprouts or Whole Foods. So I don't know anymore, but it's gonna be plain unsweetened cocoa powder. So first off, you could saute an onion and maybe a couple of teaspoons of garlic, but it's a weeknight and I'm not feeling that. So I'm gonna put two, teaspoons of garlic powder in here. I am going to put one teaspoon of onion powder. I think it's funny that someone asked me what brand I use and my answer is I don't know. Um, that's, that's the problem with beautiful jars, you guys. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. One teaspoon, two teaspoons. Okay, so I have this beautiful blend of ancho guajillo chili powder. You guys have seen that? It's hard to see there. Let's see if you can see it here a little better. No, but I just poured it all over my counter. So you can probably see it on my counter. Yeah, look, it's right there. <laughs> I'm going to put, this could also, I, what I did is I seeded, stemmed, took out the ribs of a dried ancho and guajillo peppers, put them in the dehydrator. Uh, I also cut them into strips, put them in the dehydrator till crispy, and then I um, ground it with my spice grinder. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put two, no, I'm gonna put, I'll do it in teaspoons. One tablespoon, two teaspoons. One tablespoon plus two teaspoons. Because I want this to be what makes the chili rich and kind of red because there are some chilies that don't use any tomatoes, right? They're, you could also do something similar by taking the seeds, stems, and everything off of dried ancho chilies or guajillo, what, guajillos and reconstitute them, pour hot water over them, then blend them, and you could put the pulp in here. This is an easy way to do it for me, is how I feel. Okay, so we're gonna put some cumin in here because I want it to have that kind of meaty taste. I feel like that comes from cumin. I'm gonna put a teaspoon in there. I am going to put then its best friend, coriander, in there so it doesn't get lonely. And I'm going to smell to see if I want to do equal parts. 
Yes, I do. So whenever I'm unsure, I smell and my nose tells me things. That's probably a little more than a teaspoon, but let it live its best life. Maybe it's in the cumin shadow all the time. So I'm gonna put one teaspoon plus a half question mark. Let's put, I'm just gonna put a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm not gonna put a lot in there and we can always add more. I'm moving all these spices around. So I said a quarter teaspoon. And we are going to do Mexican oregano. And Jamie says, can we use plain old chili powder? If it has salt in it, I want you to put it in before serving and not with your dried beans. If it has salt in it as an ingredient, add it after cooking. But yeah, you can. And honestly, if you're like, this is way too much effort for me and you have salt-free chili powder, just put in a couple of tablespoons of that. Live your best life, right? So yeah. Um, why do I do this? Because I want it to be the way I want it to be. Let's smell the... I think I'm going to put two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. So it's different than Greek or Italian oregano and it has a, a lemony floral smell to it and flavor so it's closer to marjoram than it is like Greek oregano. And I did two teaspoons. I'm writing this down so okay and I decided not to do that. I'm gonna cough but I'm gonna do this inhale. I'm not gonna put the jalapeno powder in today. But I am going to put in some smoked paprika. Do you love the way that I ended up putting it in the wrong bottle? And I just, I made my, this is how good my drawings are. My drawings, I studied at the same school Dr. Lyle studied at, <laughs> I think. And I'm gonna go ahead and put two teaspoons of smoked paprika in here to start off with too. Okay, and then let's put a heaping tablespoon of cocoa powder. This isn't really making this mole chili, but it adds a little depth of flavor. That'll be really yummy. And if there's something you don't like, you don't have to use it. This is your chili, it's not, when you're making it, it's your chili. When I'm making it, it's mine. So I make it the way I like it, you make it the way you like it. Okay, so I'm just gonna get these all nice and stirred up. Some of these spices are gonna end up on the edges anyhow, and we'll mix all this back in later. Oh, you, can you see? Yeah, you like the hat that way? <laughs> all right, so now I am going to, even though it's not gonna give me an exact taste, I'm, I'm dipping in with all these spices. What I'm tasting for is a balance. And I think there can be another teaspoon of garlic. I think it's strong enough to deal with it. And maybe a half a teaspoon of onion powder. Extra. Okay, so I did a whole teas two teaspoons. Oh, one and a half teaspoons of onion, three teaspoons garlic. Okay. And I originally put in three and a half cups of water. And I am going to add in my sweet potatoes and then I'm going to kind of decide do I really need more water. But now I as long as it's mostly covering this these beans soaked they soaked up at least one night. They might have soaked two nights, honestly. It's been a busy week. All right, and we're gonna put it on and cook it on high pressure for eight to 10 minutes. Now, I 
had you done these beans in something else and it took a little longer to cook it. So I'm going to put it on pressure cook. Let's do 10 minutes. Because I'll probably also, oh, you know what else I'm going to do? The counter, I clean my counter really good before this happens, just so when things like this happen, I can put them back in the jar. I'm not wasting any chili powder. <laughs> and that's another re good reason to keep your kitchen counters sterilized. So if you drop something, if something spills, you can, you're still good. Oh, thank you. Let's see what we got here. So we're going to have a while. It's going to be more than 10 minutes because it has to come up to pressure. And then we'll release the pressure. But I got a couple of things for you today that I thought would be fun. But let me come back up and see what questions I've missed. Because I know um, Jamie's saying, does anyone know how Kathy makes the steel cut oats in the slow cooker? It's so ridiculously easy. One cup steel cut oats, four cups water. Cook on low overnight. Between, it'll last between six and 12 hours. So it's probably about ready about six hours. Um, if you get quick cooking steel cut oats, which I did by accident, they're actually Scottish oats. I, I had never noticed. So what that means is it's been crushed by a stone mill. And actually I can show you, can I reach over there? This is what happens when you have a three foot counter and you're five feet tall. I'm going to see if we have one just sitting here. Yes. <laughs> and I'll show you this and they're actually really nice and creamy so it says quick cut steel cut oats and they're organic and it just says organic whole grain steel cut oats I I maybe they were cut and then ground but that's all it is so whole rolled oats versus, and see to me these just look stone ground. Yeah, there's totally stone ground. I don't know. I don't know who are they fooling, but it is not me. Okay. So you see how there's little pieces? So that oat groat, if you look at it, you can see very clearly it was an oat groat before, and it's just been crushed between these stones. And so, from what I can see, it wasn't cut into steel cut oats and then this, which makes it Scottish oats. So, you may be saying, well, how do I cook Scottish oats? Well, you know how we've been cooking it? One cup and four cups of water in our slow cooker. And there, what happens is just because they've been cut into smaller pieces, they are creamier. It actually looks as if I've cooked it with non-dairy milk and it breaks down a little bit more. So when you cook oats in the slow cooker, steel cut oats in the slow cooker versus steel cut oats in the Instant Pot. In the Instant Pot, I'm on the Jill Nusenel train of cooking them for three minutes. That makes them very separate, very chewy, perfect for savory oats. Still delicious as not savory oats if you wanna make them sweet. People either love them or hate them. So, same thing with slow cooker oats. Everything's mushy and nasty, and I'm like, mushy or creamy? So, it's not about, I like them all the ways. So, I don't really have any issue, but if you have textural issues, one of those may be your favorite, one of them may not. I do not recommend, in general, cooking rolled oats in either your slow cooker or your Instant Pot. You can do it in ramekins. If you need to like kind of have breakfast ready, and I think we're gonna do this before October's over, make baked oats, because I have a pumpkin baked oats, and it's just awesome. All right, let's see what else I missed. Oh, it's raining in Vancouver. I wish it was a wonderful autumn day in the Pacific Northwest the air conditioning came on here. I'm out, oh, and it's 80 degrees in Ohio. Okay. Warm day in Ontario. Oh, you guys. Um, and Mary said, I have no idea what brand cocoa powder it is, but I think there's an inexpensive organic fair trade. 
inexpensive compared to regular fair trade organic. And that was before the pandemic. So I have no idea with all the food pricing, how it's gone. You usually can get cocoa, I think it, and chocolate chips this time of year at Trader Joe's. And um, Karen, I would be interested to know what didn't you like about the Mexican oregano and do you dislike marjoram? So that would help me too. Oh, and Joanne says, I love meals like this. And the thing is, is it's a perfect, like last minute people came over to your house or the last time I remember making it in New Orleans, I actually was having people help me move from one, one um, house to another. And I made a big pot and I left one at each place so people could snack while they were helping me. And it's just really nice. And then if you, if freeze is great. If you didn't have sweet potatoes, you could use pumpkin or winter squash. Just sweet potatoes are usually cheaper. And usually I have sweet potatoes and black beans. Could you use a different bean? Of course, of course you could. I think it's pretty and it's Halloween-y. There's a little orange and black going on. Um, Oh yes, apple. I have seen these before. Um, it's like fermented oats and it's a Scottish food. And I, um, I did actually, there's a fermentation school who, the people who wrote the tempeh book, I don't think I have it handy. There's a class there that's all about fermented oats and I'm very interested because I joined their, um, they have like a monthly group that they meet and do a demo. So I joined that so I can watch the oat one. And I have no idea how to say so ons, so ons perhaps. And all my Scottish friends and, and Marion can give me a hard time about that. Or CJ, are you around? Um, and CJ says these look like fine pinhead oats, but, <sighs> I don't know that we have any, let me, let me look in the bot. no, that's the rolled oats. Let me see if in the bottom of the regular mummy oats, if I have any, oh, I have still cut oats here. I'll show you these. Good point. And this wasn't even what I was showing and telling about, so we still have more stuff. I like to have show and tell when it's um, things like this. And next week, I will be having recorded videos and then we'll go back to lives or a combo, depending on how far ahead of things I get. So I got some of these steel cutouts. And I'll, maybe if we see a comparison. Is that as far in as it goes? See, these are the steel cut. And so basically it's an oat groat cut into two to three pieces with a steel. And see, to me, I guess these could be ground up into this. Looks a lot like, if I was running the mill, the oat groats would go in. <laughs> but perhaps that's why they don't let me run mills. So. So anyhow, and they call steel cut oats pinhead oats over in the UK, as far as I know. But, um, and we don't, and we also call them Irish oats sometimes. And Scottish oats was something I found once and never found again. That's why when I opened this that I bought by mistake, I'm like, that looks like Scottish oats to me. All right. Can you add frozen blueberries in the oats at the beginning? Yes. At the end? Yes. Um, Cheryl doesn't like stuff in her oats and I do. I want all the flavor in my oats. So if I have frozen blueberries or blackberries, which I've done, I will actually just do a quick, I microwave them really quick or I'll leave them. If you don't want to do that, you can leave uh, like a cup out. I don't know. Oh, it's the cat. I was like, the dog just ran really fast. Do I need to be afraid of something? Because <laughs> I'm not, and I was like, okay. 
And then I heard the cat chase after him. <laughs> Farkas is mass. Okay, so we were going back to, okay, so you could take those frozen fruit out and the amount you're gonna use tomorrow and just leave it in the fridge and let it thaw. Um, I'll put a sweet potato, uh, cause I cook sweet potatoes ahead of time. If I'm just putting a little bit in, I'll mash it in and let it just warm up with the oats. Uh-oh, uh -oh, what? What happened? I think they are chasing something in the house. Okay. This could be interesting because Fergus just ran down the stairs again now and Cheryl says she thinks the animals are chasing something. Now I do have the door over here open but I can't imagine except a chipmunk did come in one, it one well it'll be exciting. It's exciting here at the Hester Purser household. So yes you absolutely you can add frozen blueberries, add all the things. I find it really weird that we cook our oats plain now. Um, you could put cocoa powder and cinnamon. You could put um, an herbal chai tea bag in there, a rose tea bag. I love all the different different kinds of that. Oh, and Debbie says it's beautiful in Central um, Virginia. 84 in Milwaukee. 88 in Minneapolis. That's crazy. That is not the way. It's cold in London which is why I want to go to the UK because it will be, what is the best way to cook oat groats? The same as old fashioned oats, absolutely not. Old fashioned oats are already cooked, they're steamed and then rolled. So they need the least cooking time of all the oats. Oat groats need the most cooking time of all the oats. So it takes longer to cook oat groats than it does rice. They're closer to wheat berries. Um, if you put them in the slow cooker though with water, go to sleep, they'll be ready when you get up. Um, and Lisa says it's still the third ring of Hades in Florida. It's it, 87 in Kansas City, 87 in Michigan, 67 and sunny in California's Gold County. Well, look, Gold Country. You did, but we'll be opening it up. So all, and you guys, the replay will be up. So basically all I did was dump some soaked bean, black beans two cups, four cups of cut up, peeled sweet potatoes, and a bunch of spices. And we're cooking it for 10 minutes and it's still not up to pressure yet, which is why we're talking about oatmeal now and I have a few other things over here that we can talk about. Um, oh, Debbie, that sounds awesome. I dropped a package off at my 45-ish year old neighbor yesterday and he opened the door dressed as Harry Potter. Oh, that sounds delightful. Um, and Karen's going back to Mexican oregano that she wasn't a fan, doesn't remember quite what it was. Maybe it's what you mixed it with. If you mix Mexican oregano with something you would normally mix, Italian or Greek oregano, you might have mixed reactions. Oh wow, Linda says a few years back, the first week of October, we had an epic snowstorm. <gasps> I want an epic snowstorm. No, I don't. I, who? Can you hear it? Hello? Ha. Different people have different feelings about speeding that up. These beans are either going to be ready or they're not. They're sprouted. They're as soaked as they're going to get so I'm not really worrying about it. If you were using dry beans, you would need to use more water and cook longer, like 25 minutes-ish or so. Aw, thanks, Karen, says wear my witch hat in good health. I'm working on that. Let's see. How many sweet potatoes did you use? That is a great question. That is why I said four cups, because I cut it and took the bad parts off. Um, I think it was two pretty big ones and a medium one. Aw, thank you. I feel precious. No, my hat is precious. I am not precious. Thanks, Bet Betty. Um, we've got over here cooking some sweet potato black bean chili. <laughs> I like that. They're chasing my house elf. I wish I had a house elf. 
Um, peanut butter powders, getting oats, like seriously, we could spend the next 30 days talking about what we can put in oats. I used to have 50 flavored oatmeal recipes on healthy slow cooking, but I got rid of some of them. They, some of them may come back, but I have like um, fig, vanilla fig oats with um, baklava topping. I've got an Earl Grey. I have so many oats. So yeah, there's lots and lots. Ooh, CJ, that sounds good. Carrots and zucchini and curry powder are great in oatmeal. And I think that would, that sounds yummy. I also, I don't know if I still have it. I used to have a carrot halva oatmeal. And I can always find that. Kimberly loves peanut butter powder. Let's see what we got. Perfect 70 in Southern California, you guys. Um, beautiful here in the mountains of NC. I know I want to go visit the mountains really soon. Oh, hi, Jill from Spain. It's awesome to see you here. Hope you're having a good day. Oh, video 1000 night says what suggestions do you have for berries that are getting soft or liquidish but not moldy so okay usually once they get too soft I decide they go to the compost because while we can't see the mold yet that doesn't mean the mold isn't developing on the inside getting ready I don't know it creeps me out um, now berries that just look like they're starting to dehydrate in the fridge which I've had happen I will just finish dehydrating them so that would be my first go-to, just, just to hydrate it. You could also, if it's just looking bad, but they're not bad yet, you could puree them, freeze them in ice cube trays, and then put them in your oatmeal or various muffins and things like that, smoothies. Uh, Kathy says, when I cook oat groats, I boil for 10 to 20 minutes, cover and turn off. Later when I'm in the kitchen or using the stove again, I'll uncover, add more water, boil a while, and then cover and turn off again. Um, and I think, I'm trying to remember, I think it was the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot. There's a setting under rice and grain, like each time you press a button, there's things underneath it. Like if you do yogurt, there's like um, sanitize or ferment basically. And there's one that's like this long cooking grain that like cooks it really slow for a long time. And I usually cook my wheat berries and oat groats on that just because I don't have to pay attention to them. I am on team. It takes a long time to cook, so let's slow cook it or do put it in the Instant Pot so I can go live, live my life and do other things. Um, let's see. Oh, hi, Kathy. We got your note and we are talking about it. So Cheryl will get back to you soon. Um, all right. Oh, so video saying, do I mean make a raisins out of them, out of the blueberries? No, when you dehydrate a blueberry, they actually keep their shape. And you're like, why is she going away again? Because last year, at Sprouts, I scored like two pallets of blueberries on sale for like not much money at all. And this is what I mean. See, they're not really, they do get a little wrinkled, but they're not soft. In fact, we can crush them. See, here's one. And it's going to be a powder. Maybe. No, nope. a little bit of powder's coming off. It's not exactly a raisin. It's it's kind of like a little bit drier than a raisin. I'm putting it in my mouth now. It's kind of like a piece of candy. But it has it does have more substance to it. I also took some blueberries, strawberries, and other things and I made powders. So those powders are great for flavoring teas, oatmeal, drinks putting them on the rim of drinks, things like that. Hmm, that's really good. 
Oh, hey, Miss Terry, how are you today? Thank you for joining us. Oh, and Apple, I've heard of the Wonder Bag, but I have not used it. But I think, so the Wonder Bag, you heat, basically, if I understand correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, like you'd cook a pot on the stove and then you would put it in the Wonder Bag. So you can bring it up to heat and it insulates it and helps it keep cooking, which is great for saving power. You know, if you're in a, a situation maybe that you don't have a lot of, of, of power to use. Oh, and Apple does have one and loves it. All right, Betsy, I have a question about Instant Pots. Is it enough to switch out the rubber O-ring to handle odors of savory versus sweet? That is a really good question. And those of you who may not know, wow, we're doing all show and tell that I am not prepared for. I'm going over here to grab um, another Instant Pot lid so you can see what we're talking about. It may or may not be be dusty. It is very dusty, in fact. So I, it's dusty enough that I'm going to rinse it off before I show you. Because <laughs> I store, um, I store my Instant Pot lids like this on top of the base so that the smells can release and get, get done with. So what Betsy is talking about is this ring. And it will hold smells. You can, basically, this little guy, there's another little plastic piece over here that can also hold some smells. But it can be very helpful. If you have more than one Instant Pot, you can have one sweet, one savory. Um, you can also take that out, put it in the dishwasher. When we're take, putting it back in, we wanna make sure it's in good all the way around. And at times, these are gonna to get too loose and you'll have to replace it. Okay, let's see if that's in my camera view now. A little bit, so that's okay. Um, so it's, it's a good step. The whole lid, as is, can go in the top of your dishwasher. And I find that can often be a good way. You can also soak it, the whole thing. Just soak it in soapy water, maybe, um, with a drop of concentrated cleaner can help a little bit too. But I think in general, if you're having, if you notice a lot, like you've made a curry or a doll, and now you're like, my oatmeal tastes weird. Sometimes just changing the ring will help, but I find running it through the dishwasher a few times or soaking it is more likely to get all the smells out. The metal isn't gonna hold it, but the little, you know, you probably have another little piece of plastic in the lid. Um, can I demo powders from fruit? If I find some more cheap fruit, but I, I could probably do, we're gonna do another dehydrator class in Kathy's Cooking Club. Everybody was super excited when I mentioned that because there's already one in there. And um, yeah, basically, and I can tell you too, seriously, I would take this, since they were dehydrated last year, I'd put them in the dehydrator again a little bit um, to get any moisture that may have seeped in because if I'm gonna powder them, I'm putting them in a spice grinder and if they have the le that had too much moisture to just turn into a powder. You want it to be just brittle and then just make the powder as small as you, as you want it to be. Usually with a powder like that, I would make it quite fine, as fine as I was able to make it. Whereas like this chili powder isn't super fine. But I also know that those pieces are gonna reconstitute and give you a little bite of chili in there and that's gonna be really exciting. Oh, thanks, I'm glad you guys like the hat. Oh, Seven Piece Frog is here too. And Mona said, I would buy a dehydrator just for those blueberries. And I just use the Breville back here. I have a Ninja um, oven like that that's kind of half the size that folds up. I've used the dehydrator in it. I also use a Nesco dehydrator that someone gave me for free and I see at thrift stores a lot for like 10 or $15. Um, 
Okay, awesome. Yeah, Betsy said, I had no idea the lid could go through the dishwasher. Yes, and I think that's the thing most people don't know. Now, I like anything else, the dishwasher, I wouldn't do it every single time, especially if you use it every day, but maybe put it through once a week. Once a week, once a month, depending on how often you use it can be a real help. Then also, you could take the ring out, wash them separately, put the ring back in. And it could, it could compromise the silicone ring a little bit sooner, but probably not. Um, okay, awesome. Justine, so dehydrated foods in a jar never goes bad. Those blueberries are over a year old. Yes, as long as they stay airtight, they don't get wet. Um, one of the things that after you dehydrate berries like this, you're supposed to shake them up a little bit at a time just to try and keep that going so there's no mold that forms on it. And I don't see any on here. Because all it takes is one not dry enough berry to introduce that here. I did not um, vacuum seal this or anything. I have sun-dried tomatoes that are two or more years old. I just finished up some um, tomato powder that was several years old recently. And so when I'm doing powders, I know I have it over here somewhere. I have a little, oh, here we go. I have a little cup and I save these desiccant packs from like if we have a vitamin or something, you know, package and I just save them. So like with the tomato powder, I just throw one of those in and that will help keep the moisture out of it. And I do that a lot of times with spice blends as well. Oh gosh. Um, Apple says you've inspired me to make all the powders. Yay! Mushroom, tomato, kale, fruits, right? Anything you can dehydrate to get crispy enough, you can then make a powder. You know those super expensive, super green powders that you are trying not to pay $30 for? Buy some kale and some mustard greens and whatever's in there, put in the dehydrator and make your own powder. And I make my own mushroom powder, which adds a lot of really good stuff. And in fact, we might even add some mushroom powder to this. I didn't even think about that. Um, that is a great question. And I have no idea when I dehydrate, literally, I will put it on for like 12 to 20 hours and I go to sleep and I get up in the morning and I see if it still needs to go. Um, with dehydration, you can't really over dehydrate. I mean, you can, you could just, maybe you wanted raisins and now you're gonna have great powder. But if I'm looking to powder it, it can't be dry, too dry. Oh, thanks Linda, I'm glad that you've been hanging out. You guys have been awesome. And Alicia says, I can vouch for the Excalibur. Everybody loves the Excalibur and I'm just trying to, I don't know. Eventually I probably will get a different dehydrator, but I have, three trays in here and another tray over there and a Nesco. I'm interested in making some of those wraps, but right now my dance card is full because I'm hanging out with you guys every day, right? And then like tomorrow, Stacy Cross is gonna be on the Are You Afraid of the Starch Solution show. So we get to ask her cool questions. And Lisa Rice is gonna be back on on, Wednesday, uh, on Thursday and Wednesday at one, I'm on Chef AJ doing my Halloween thing. So we're gonna make ancho pumpkin, pumpkin queso, green ghoulish soup, potato soup. And with a, I'm developing, as we speak, a black flavor sprinkle powder. Um, for that, we're gonna do a pumpkin shake with no ice cream. So, that's pretty full. So, <laughs> that's why. Um, let's see. Here we go. Oh, Lisa said I came across a mad sale at Sprouts on yellow potatoes. I bought more than I have room for in my freezer. Can you dehydrate those? And if so, how would you do it? I would say yes, because I've bought dehydrated potatoes, but I've not done it. Um, if you would l look it up, or if you email me at kathyhester at gmail.com, 
there's a dehydrator blogger that I follow, and that's where I would look to answer that question. No idea the name. Um, Oh, and Justine brought dehydrator racks for my Ninja Foodie multi cooker. So that's like like an instant pot, right? And there's an air fryer one <laughs> that I recently gave away on our kind of buy nothing list. And I think it's great if you're a one person household. It's not the best dehydrator. So yeah, it did orange slices, it took forever. And also then you get two little spaces like that one on top of the other and I found you had to switch switch them to get them to come out even. Um, I am on Chef AJ on Wednesday. I'm always the first Wednesday, at, usually at one o'clock. One o'clock is like my favorite time to be on live. All right, so I'm gonna start. This has been sitting here for four minutes. This is the um, Pro model. Actually, it's the Duo Evo Plus, which existed for like all of like three months <laughs> but it has the same top as the pro and what this does you know how it usually spatters this makes a finer mist and this is just a button that I push and so you can kind of see the mist I think here if I was doing my um, regular duo I would have that little thing and I go Psst so it doesn't just splatter all over and all over the overhead camera, especially. Um, okay. So we'll wait for that. And then we'll just, we're gonna zhuzh it up. I'm trying to think, what would you rather have me do? I can make a mocktail from my, um, my raising the bar box called siren song which I'm gonna make with or without you after <laughs> this is my mocktail into the evening or would you rather see what I bought from California balsamics when I was in Sacramento so I will let you guys um, and Jack Jack says I like cutting and steaming extra potatoes then freezing them ready to go they go bad really fast I actually had a bunch of potatoes go bad and I was mad um, because we've been eating a lot of potatoes, but I just it just seems like right now the russets that are coming out are just not lasting like they used to. It's not even the heat because it's not that kind of hot. Um, and Raven says, I haven't watched the dehydrator classes, and she means in Kathy's cooking club. Do you have recipes like soup mix? I think we did powders, powders, fruit slices, stuff like that. Um, but I could do another one for sure because everybody's asking for that. Oh, okay. I see a lot of mocktails. Excellent. California. Don't worry. You got outvoted on the California balsamic, but I'm going to show you all here. I'll show you a sneak peek. The, and we bought an extra suitcase so we could check all these. And we're going to do some stuff with some single ones. So I'll, I'll show three and then I'll make my mocktail. At autumn apple balsamic and it's got like a green apple flavor sweet apple pie balsamic which has like cinnamon maple syrup kind of feel and hello it's happy pumpkin spice doing a, like a little fall dance and I'm gonna do in this month I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I'm gonna do recipes with each one of these. There are more vinegars up here too, so don't worry, they'll get their day. It's not the complete set, but I did spend a fortune because I was like, oh, I can get these without shipping. And, and I was also able to try all, of the, try all of them at Chef AJ's event, which was great. And I did get some things from local spicery. And both, both of the owners are just so sweet and so nice. Okay, and we'll see if, if we feel like hanging out, we will, um, and California balsamic, I do not think uses our artificial flavors. It all said, like even the green apple is natural flavors. Yeah, they're all natural flavors. They're not artificial. 
So that's wrong a thousand nights. They do use regular natural flavorings. Like, there is kind of a mocktail class. I actually, in Kathy's Cooking Club, there is a balsamic class. And some of that has mocktails too. So that was really super fun. Um, and we'll, okay. Let me look at this. Let's check and see if the beans are done. So in case I'm just like making stuff and we can always do another, we can do a mocktail. All right, the big reveal, how I test to see if beans are done. Oh, it smells good. There is a place to put this here, but it blocks the camera. So if you didn't know, that's places for your lid. I take two of my um, taster spoons. I'm gonna dig in here, get a bean. Yeah, they're so done. So you can see already they're a little squishy. And I squish it and twist. If that is a smushed up bean, which is exactly what we wanna see. So if I did that and it came apart a bean in two halves and they were kinda of hard, a little toothsome, if I needed to put some more water in, I would. But here in this case, I didn't, would not have needed to because there's plenty of water to bring it back up to pressure. All you need is a half a cup to a cup. And then I would probably, I would see how hard it was. If it was really hard, I might cook another five minutes. With chili, I don't care if it's a little softer because you'll see what I'm getting ready to do. So first, actually I should be back here. I'm gonna make you dizzy, making me dizzy. Mm, it's pretty good. I'm tasting it, is the bean cooked? The skins on these beans that I got are tough. They're even a little tough now, but that's just the way they are. But it'll give a nice texture to the chili. I'm checking the, the levels of things. So we've got lots of nice, like chocolate, cumin, ancho. Then we've got a little nether layer with the guajillo, Mexican oregano. There's no salt or anything in here yet. Also, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna add a quarter tablespoon, or no, quarter cup. I just failed kindergarten. <laughs> a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. And if you can't use it, just leave it out. I could have also used broth. I, without salt, I could have put bouillon cubes in there. This is what I'm deciding to do. And I think it could still use, I'm gonna add another half teaspoon of garlic and a quarter teaspoon of onion. And I'm writing that down. And I think that's gonna be pretty good. So I'm gonna take my spatula and just mix this stuff in. And some of the potatoes are gonna just naturally mash up. You guys see how that's happening? I'm not really, I don't need a masher, but they're just coming apart. And do you see how this is starting to look more like a chili and less like a soup as those potatoes come apart? And now I can push them to the side. And if you have someone who just doesn't love sweet potatoes, you can just make them all go away. And this is a very inexpensive meal, especially if you ended up just getting chili for the stew powder somewhere, which has cumin and onion and garlic and all of those things already in it. It's just, I, I would not cook dried beans with anything with salt because it can take cooking time longer. And already we don't know how long the beans took to get to all the other places. I have to show you. So this is, you saw what I did, and now look at that. That looks like chili. That doesn't look like sweet potatoes and beans like it did before. And then you can just add in salt, salt substitute. You can serve this. Um, we could have added more vegetables in here. This is, I like it just the way it is. You can put it in burritos, tacos bake some corn tortillas and make nachos or tostadas. You could pour the ancho oat chili all over it. 
so many things you can do with this. And this would easily serve, I think, five to six people. If I just maybe a friend called and said, hey, I have four guests and I need to bring them right now. Cook up some rice, serve it over, you're done, right? So again, and this is what we're gonna be eating tonight. And I love it because in some ways it does mimic like old fashioned meaty chili, just the texture with the, the sweet potato. But it's such a wholesome, wholesome dish that I just love it. All right, so now, now that chili has been done, let's see what other questions. Ooh, Debbie just had the apple pie balsamic on her salad last night. Um, Mona uses curry balsamic, California balsamic, curry balsamic on roasted cauliflower and loves ruby red. Yeah, there's lots of really great, um, great flavors. And I know 1000 Nights says that, but on the labels, it's very clear. So I don't know. I've never heard that. So you guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sure there are some flavored balsamics out there, but California Balsamics, which is a company, they use natural flavors. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh, my mocktails, my rose syrup mocktail video. I did do that, didn't I? Um, yeah, it's a nice deep color. And what's really also cool that I forgot to mention as we go back to the chili is that, see, it's got that nice chili color to it, but there are no tomatoes in it. You could add in some tomatoes if you wanted to, but your friends that can't eat tomatoes that are not allergic to all chilies and nightshades, <laughs> caveat, can have this. So I have a friend who can't have tomatoes because of the acid, but do fine with peppers. So your mileage could vary, but hopefully it works for you. All right. Oh, use miso for umami and soup, yep. Well, and if you're using soy miso, Dr. Greger feels that that is an okay salt to use. So even when you get into whole food plant-based, whole food plant-based, no oil, SOS, everybody's following different doctors. So always do what works best for you. <laughs> That's great. And yeah, no, this is gonna freeze great. Yeah, so when I, real, thank you for asking. So when I opened it up, you saw the whole chunks of sweet potatoes sitting on top of the black beans. I took a, a wooden spatula and I stirred it and most of them broke up, up and just mashed and melded into the chili almost. Obviously sweet potatoes don't melt, but it's kind of that sort of thing. And ones that stayed a little bit more whole, all I did is take it with the spatula and push it up against the inside side of the Instant Pot and then it mashed up. And you can still see some bits of the sweet potato and you'll feel some of the stringiness from the sweet potato, but to me that just makes it seem meatier. Yeah, and it'd be great in burritos. Oh, thanks Trish. Let's see what else. Trish said, great outfit. I'm trying not to show you all the great outfit stuff. Um, let's see what we got. Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm gonna make this mocktail. And so I'm gonna show you this too. So raising the bar is this guy. So it's raisingthebar.com. This is gonna have sugar in it for those, um, almost all of these well from raising the bar. It's a mocktail box. So nothing ever has any alcohol in it, including the bitters and the flavorings, which are really cool. And I got the stuff just for this one. I have a cute little um, owl. 
for us to put things in. Isn't he cute? And he has, it's, it's a whole little drink lid set thing. Let's see if I can move this so it's a little less. Okay, that's still a little see squishy, but let's do it. So they have a lot of these zero alcohol alcohols. And we'll talk a little more about that. And they have this, we're using the Siren Shrub Honey Crisp Sparkling Shrub. And I really like these syrups. And I've been getting some of these from um, Home Goods, in fact. And it's Portland syrups. And they're awesome. So, like, again, if you're SOS, this one isn't going to work for you. Because there's going to be sugar in the syrup. And sugar, oftentimes, in these zero alcohol um, alcohols as well. So, oh, Debbie says the chili looks yummy. Okay, so in the Meyer lemon syrup, where is the, that tells me what to do. Oh, here we go. Water, organic cane sugar, Meyer lemon puree, lemon juice, organic lemon concentrate, and citric acid. Actually, you'll probably see it better in this one. Ooh. <laughs> that was all me. Why is it not? Okay, my little switcher isn't working as well, so it's right there. Can you? Nope, it's not going to let. We can do it from up above. I don't know if you, there, you can sort of see that there. See, you know I'm not lying. Um, then I'll read this too. This is in the liqueur. I think you can sort of see those. And this is Pintri Pintire Adrift, which some of these like will be very heady, touchy feeling. This one says herbaceous, coastal, fresh. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like that's a good thing. And the ingredients in this are British sea herb extract, lemon juice concentrate, natural flavors, acid, malic acid, Cornish sea salt preservative and potassium sorbate. So again, this may or may not be for you. Ooh. It definitely has a little bit of a gin sort of, because it's, it's a botanical, non-alcoholic spirit that usually tends towards gin. Ooh. You know, well, video 1000 Nights said it was only for fruit. And I'm not sure that I got any balsamics that weren't fruit, but maybe I did. So this siren shrub, a shrub, and if you can see Nancy McDermott's strawberry shrub over on Healthy Slow Cooking. So I took fresh strawberries, sugar, vinegar, and that's, that was a way of preserving um, fruit and using it in drinks. And it's become more popular. So this is carbonated water, Honeycrisp siren shrub, which is Honeycrisp apple, organic apple cider vinegar, and organic cane sugar. So again, not trying to fool anybody or tell you if you don't do sugar, this is not for you. Okay. Um, so the siren song says, oh, and I need a measure. I need a better measure. And I'm going to need some ice too, but we'll get that in a second. It's my little, this has ounces, right? Oh, those ounces are so light. I shouldn't have been putting this in the water. It says one and a half ounces of pin tire, adi uh, pin tire adrift. And what's kind of fun for me is because I'm not really drinking. It says one and a half ounces, not teaspoons. There's the ounces. There we go. I want to go to here. And it gives you four different cocktails you can make with this. And just like liquor, these non-alcoholic spirits are like $30 and $40 a bottle. So getting to try some of these little ones is really nice for me. Okay, so we're going to put this and we're going to do a half ounce of the Meyer lemon syrup. Oh, that smells good. 
So where's the half ounce? I need to get a new ounce one. I'll tell Cheryl to get me that for Christmas. And I'm just gonna let that, and so we're gonna mix it together. Then we're gonna put it ice and mix the shrub in it. <laughs> this is how I'm mixing it. You can mix it properly. Also, it did say to get some time for garnish, but what I'm gonna do, so I have this beautiful lemon thyme, and I was thinking it would be fun to take a couple of sprigs in here and just crush them. So I, you could muddle them, like put in, in the bottom with a spoon, but I'm crushing them so it will release its little lemon thyme oils. Okay, and I'm gonna mix that in there too. Oh, so I'm kind of making it my own still. Uh, it's not my recipe, but I can talk about it more, so I cannot put it in. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it more. I'm gonna walk away now, put some ice in here, and then we can talk about the drink a little more, and I can talk, I can talk the ingredients slowly. So I'm getting my fancy, fancy ice over here. And I'm probably gonna be putting in more of this siren shrub, and that's this one. I don't remember if I put the ingredients up here so you can know that I am not lying to you. And so the shrub smells like vinegar and apples. Okay, so now I am going to just kind of stir all that around get some of those good things all mixed up. And this is, it also had, came with some dried apple slices for garnish, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna save those because I'm drinking this out of a sippy cup, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so I have all the garnish I need right here. And Alicia, I will definitely talk about these. Ooh, so I like that it's Siren Song because this really does taste beachy. And I, from reading the ingredients, British sea herb extract and Cornish sea salt. It's not real salty, but it does have this like beachy breeze, which is making me feel better about today. It definitely has some of those gin botanical, uh, gin botanical i can't say it right now flavors it's like a little herby but it's light it's more on the mid the mid side of things it's not like dark juniper berries or anything like that so the syrup for brands is portland syrups you can get those online this is the small one you can also find a lot of, I have so many of these over on our bar. And they're really fun because this way, you saw how like it took what, 10 seconds to make this fancy drink that even as a mocktail would cost me $12 out. So Portland, and I like a lot of their syrups. Um, Siren Shrub is the name of the shrub company. Um, where does it say? Where are they from? They're from Wisconsin. And then the Pen Tribe is, they have a, a whole bunch of different zero alcohol spirits. Oh, thanks Apple, you're the best. And Apple, will you email me please? Cause I couldn't find your email the other day and I wanted to email you something. Um, Alicia, did that help? And I can read, um, I can read what, so I put in one and a half ounces of Pintire Adrift, half an ounce of Meyer lemon syrup, syrup. It says five to six ounces siren shrub. I just did whatever. And it has, it said optional time for garnish, dried apple slice for garnish. And I don't have here. So when you get the box, it's this cute little box, you open it up and all the stuff's there and you always get 
a special thing. I think with this one, I think I got a citrus reamer, but I got an ice bag and a mallet in one of them. I've gotten watermelon popsicle holders. You always get like some kind of cool thing. I got a rose ice cube tray and a few things and you can make four drinks from them. It's not a cheap subscription box, but right now it's the Okay, so it's not the only subscription box that I have. It's the only monthly subscription box that I have, that I can say. I used to do the Harry Potter subscription box I, in Rancho Gordo Bean Club and the, what's the spices? I'm in Burlap, Burlap and Barrels Spice Club as well. Okay, awesome, Alicia, you got that. Good. So, um, okay, okay, well, we'll see. I'll look at mine and see, but I'm pretty sure everything I have, like, I don't see anywhere where they say artificial flavorings, too, or chemicals, but I'll see what I can do. And if you find a better vinegar, you can always use it. And there are all these little vinegar stores, vinegar and olive oil stores. If you're whole food plant-based, you might be like, I don't want to go into that olive oil store. Go in, see if they have vinegars and you, you're able to taste them. So like I got this amazing pineapple balsamic from a store local to us. And it's amazing in seltzer water. So a lot of these sweeter or fruit forward balsamic vinegars are amazing in seltzer or in a cocktail. Um, I did make, cause you know that whole, what do they call it? Healthy Coke was going around on TikTok and it was lime seltzer with balsamic. And I think that was it, they squeeze a lime. No, that does not taste like a Coke. But if you take a lime seltzer, a little lime juice, elderflower balsamic, fig balsamic, and then I took holiday pie cocktail bitters, which has a lot of cinnamon, spices, and all that. Put that in there, a few drops. And at that time, I had had some cinnamon infused maple syrup and put a little bit of that in it, and that tasted like a Coca-Cola. It, it has maple syrup in it, it has some other things, so it may not be for you either. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I think you're talking my name with a subscription box. Yes, I love a subscription box. It's, you do have to pay shipping with this because shipping has gotten so expensive. So again, if you're interested, it's raising the bar and it's a zero alcohol subscription box. So it's always mocktails. Sometimes there's zero alcohol spirits in there. Sometimes there's not. There's only been one thing in the past two years that was not vegan. They had some honey straws in there. Uh, but every time they've like made a, one of the cocktail recipes calls for an egg white, they give an aquafaba option for vegan substitution. So I feel like it's been really pretty good. That was the only thing that I gave away to some friends. So I feel pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice subscription box. Um, That is a good question. Apple saying, I know you've done this before, but do you think you'll make better beer this month? And I think I will. I think, because it's not a whole food plant-based no oil recipe. And I do, you can go look up my better beer recipe right now on YouTube. And it uses coconut milk and sugar and things. And usually I give kind of a half-hearted whole food plant-based alternative but I think maybe I'll try and make a whole food plant-based alternative. Now, in doing that, I may use a flavoring and that flavoring may not have all natural flavors. So I'm not sure how that'll go over, but I'll probably just offer that as optional because there is um, a butter vanilla flavoring that is vegan, but it does have like, what is it? Pripal glycol or something in there that I know people who are eating really really purely are not going to be super excited about. But I also, in the old butter beer recipe, use some vegan Miyoko's butter. 
as well because you can make a date syrup with vanilla which will give you the caramel but you're not going to really get those buttery undertones so i'm thinking about that um oh that's awesome i know i wish they had an affiliate for that program because like it's i pay more for that subscription box than i have any other subscription box i've ever had and it's one of my favorites there's just something really delightful about being able to come home. Like when I go out, it's not that I don't ever drink any alcohol. I was obviously trying to drink less because my liver was having issues. Um, and so if we would go out, I would get a drink because sometimes it can cost, it, it maybe cost 12 to $16 to get a drink out, but it could cost you $100 to get the ingredients to make that one drink to see if you like it. So I love the fact that I get all these minis and then if I'm like, this Meyer syrup, lemon syrup is amazing, I can go buy a big bottle. I wouldn't want to try a lot of these $30 to $50 bottles and then not like it. So I like having some of these. Sometimes you even get a large bottle with the box. So sometimes it'll seem no spirits, just all syrups and different things and spices. There's teas that have come with it too. So some of them you brew teas. And I haven't looked, I, when you are a subscriber, you go onto the site and they have a playlist for each month's um, box. So you can have your own little cocktail lounge and play the songs. There'll be, you get to see all the four recipes and you should be able to make all four with your box. Oh, this is so good. I really wasn't sure about that. Now I'm very sure about that. Um, Oh, what kind of jalapeno powder do I buy or do you always make my own? I try to always make my own, but like I spent too much money and got this at Savory Spice. It was like $6.25. I've gotten some Badia, which is a, a Hispanic brand at, at um, Target. So that's a good place to get it. Jalapeno powder can be a little hard to source. And if you can't find any, just grab some jalapenos and dehydrate them and grind them. It's much cheaper anyhow. Okay, awesome, you guys. Well, I think it's time for me to go eat and have my cocktail. I guess I'll make one for Cheryl if she likes it. But I'll see you guys tomorrow at 4, and I will be deciding later tonight what I'm making. But chances are good it's dinner. All right, have an amazing day and don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Stacy Cross, who's my health specialist from the McDougal 12 Day Program. Me and Cheryl will be hanging out for an hour and then I'll come back on at four is what I'm thinking to have another live with you for Halloween. All right, have a great rest of your day.